Levi. Yes. I have a confession to make. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> I mess up spelling guard more often than I feel a man in his mid 30s should. So, do you, do you feel that people should be pronouncing it guard? Guard. Yeah. It's weird, kind of, if you think about it. The what, leg hug position. What other word has UA? Oh, I'm sure a lot of them. I'm the wrong guy to ask on this topic. Guard. Guard. I saw a Gouard. great shirt in the Gouard. airport. Okay. It was a guy walking. I was in Phoenix. And on the shirt, it said engineer written like five different times. Oh, and the funny. first four were crossed out and it said, I'm a, and then engineer crossed out, spelt wrong. Engineer underneath it, spelt wrong, different way. <laughs> All the way in the bat- last one, it said, I'm good at math. I'm good at math. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Is that like a chronic thing? Is it a lot of people, a lot of engineers like bad at spelling? I don't know. I'm sure there's Or is it just great. like kind of how people decide well, to funny enough, choose? Let's see. Well, my uncle, he's an engineer and yeah. he will tell you that he's not the greatest at spelling. I'm actually the opposite. I'm really good at spelling. I'm glad you are because I am horrendous at spelling. It was funny because so my mom is from Denmark and she wasn't the best at English when she was over here. And I would be like in third grade or fourth grade, we'd have like a list of spelling words and I would just memorize the list and then spell the list. Mm. So my mom didn't have to pronounce it. I'm like, it's okay, mom. I've got this. I'm like, <laughs> thanks for helping me out. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, so we got two topics today. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I got that off my chest, by the way. Gward. There's got to be some Gward. other, I can't think of some other ones. Gowrod. I... Oh, you know what's horrible? Jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I spell the U and the I every time. Hmm. You know, that could be a, a separate rant. Some people spell it together. Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. Or they ju-jitsu, like they hyphenate mm. it, or they space it. That's why we I was, say grappling around I was these thinking parts. about that when I was coming up with the studio name. Oh, yeah. No space there. It was like no space. There's no space, no hyphen. I think it's just easier to type too, like jujitsu. But I think maybe on the website I actually have them hyphenated. Mm. But just hyphen's weird. It, eventually, we'll switch over to grappling. But jujitsu itself. I mean, I think we had a different podcast idea, right? That we're talking about how jujitsu is separate from grappling. Yeah. I so think that's we'll, okay. We'll talk about that more. But theory studio. So we got yes. two topics to cover today. The first is our grappling industries recap, where we oh give away boy. some free stuff. Woohoo! And then the second is a, a topic about movement pairings slash combinations we think work pretty well together. I wish we had some sound file that came with the the P4 that had like classical music in the background. That would be good. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'll post. Yes, I'll post the 1968 that. Kimura mm, pairs yeah. great with a my, back take my around taste, the back if you're doing it from Rosa. My taste are more refined. <laughs> so, okay. So First grappling off, industries. grappling industries. I actually have a couple thank yous to throw out, and I'm mm, sure I think it. you already sent some out too. Mm-hmm. But I want to say thank you to Grappling Industries for letting us set up at their competition. Very nice of them. Super cool of them. They oh didn't need gosh. to do that. And huge thank you to the team for their hospitality. Mm-hmm. They, nobody, not a single person like bothered us about it or nope. didn't know about it. They were just super cool. Yeah. And the fact that we were just camped out there and talking to people and doing grip challenges and stuff. So. My next thank you from the Grappling Podcast is thank you to everyone who stopped by to say oh hello. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Yeah. we I had a couple of familiar faces just because I've been in the Grappling community for a little bit, so it was nice people come by saying hi, trying our grip battle or grip challenge. Yeah, that was really fun. grip challenge. But yeah, just people that were hanging out, just taking their time between matches and even just wanting to recap with us mm-hmm. of all what would happen. So I, I really love that. It was pretty cool. It was nice. It was neat just having people so open to just come and discuss and, you know. Well, especially when you think that not many people knew who we were. Yeah. Because we we're sitting up as a podcast, like you just met some random people and yeah. suddenly you're like, oh, I'll sit down and talk with you about how my match went. Like sometimes it could be a little intense, I would say. Kind of funny too is I actually should probably give an apology as well to all the parents, to all of all the children of all the chocolate we gave away. You can blame my wife for that brilliant idea on her part. That was oh, a yes. Idea. People want sugar. I was thinking, what if we did bananas next time? You know, we could do well, fruits. It just depends on, like she was saying, like it helped kind of draw some people over by us to Same. let us know that or let fruit. them know we we're there. Mid match but... fruit, you know, or mid competition fruit is good. Yeah, like, like, maybe. Something to think about. I don't know. I, I wanted to make I... a Donkey Kong joke, and I feel like that was the best way to set it up. I'm playing <laughs> a long game here. I was waiting for that. <laughs> I I think the maybe we'll just have to do Halloween rules where we'll put you know limit one, yeah, 
I, I, actually, I was fine with people. There's a couple orphans one. coming by that would yeah. take five or six, but please try to keep it under ten. Yeah, please. No, but that was good. I'm happy that we gave away a bunch of candy and stuff. But okay, so we have to announce some winners. But first, I have to share some bummer news with the audience I'm with glad, a silver lining. I'm glad you're sharing it, not me. Yeah. So. There, it was an interesting day for Levi and I. We had some technical difficulties. Starting off the day with Levi drove all the way down there and his TV broke. It yes. cracked in the very bottom side <laughs> at some point in the transition. And just his screen is just mutilated. And yeah, we had to sucked. run out and buy another TV. Mm-hmm. And then with our audio equipment, it was working seemingly great. And then but, what happened? And then something happened with our SD card where <laughs> all of our audio was lost. 12 hour day oh. and all of our audio was lost. And it was which, so good because Matt had some really great conversations with a lot of awesome people there. Oh, yeah. Industries. So good. So I think we were, we were looking forward to, you know, having them play back and everyone listen to them. So that just sucked. And again, just like jujitsu, we took the experience just like everyone did at Grappling Industries and we recapped, yeah. had some ideas of how we can improve it for next time. So just lessens that chance of it happening again. So we have a, some good couple pre-event checks yep. we're gonna do some equipment stuff that we can triple, bring along yep triple redu- check it or redundant systems and it was good i mean just like many people going out to grappling industries and trying to you know test themselves and see where they lie like it was our our first official event going out there and we had to actually discuss that on the way down mm-hmm. that uh, you know we never really seen anybody have some sort of podcast set up or whatever so this was new to us like even the audio levels in the in the arena and yeah set up and how we would have people come over so it was it was a brand new experience for us so just taking our equipment moving it setting things up it just seems like that's every experience or something good and better to approve upon that you you get from it so and well the interesting thing here that i thought when i listen to podcasts and people say like things came up audio record didn't record and stuff like that i've always been curious and like how does that happen right Mm -hmm. like you've done it so many times yeah and it's like there's this weird thing that happens when you tra- when you unhook all of your equipment and then rehook it all back up together. Right. It just every like it seems like the, there's more opportunity for not only like error on my part of hooking it up or some type of thing like that, but just weird things happen. But don't worry, listeners, it's not just us despairing this whole time because we actually do still have some cool stuff to say. Well, think about like big bands when they set up and like sound systems and like their job is check, just check, to play check. and yeah. it's a sound you know the sound setup crew that's the one that has to amplify it and suddenly like they have a chord messed up or something like that like that's a that's a huge thing that like now you're taking like away from them like now you're looking at them at the band thinking oh why are you guys messing up this is seems unprofessional but it's like the sound team in the background oh yeah poor sound you know? team. <laughs> you know it's you like, know what's funny it's one of those things that nobody notices as long as it works but if the minute it sucks they're like oh my oh, god it's very true but people, here people always find the hiccups we we have some we have a lot of stuff to get through today, and I I didn't want to just bum out the our audience here because I actually wanted to say that we got some cool stuff too. Well, why you don't know? why don't we start with the uh, the thing that dominated the day, which was oh the grip challenge. It was the grip challenge. Well, actually, is it okay if we actually jump back a sec? Because I wanted to say thank you to all those who did come and interview with us, mm-hmm. and we actually are sending a, what was it, a $10 BJJ Fanatics gift card your way. That's true. All you have to do is email us at mm-hmm. info at thegrapplingpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. And we will send you a $10 BJJ Fanatics gift card for just as a thank you. We still yes. have the competition we're doing this year where we're going to hand out a $100 one, but mm-hmm. just send us an email and well, we just need to verify it's you. So share your first and last name. You know, if there's anything that you can you know, that we talked about that you can show, hey, this is what we talked about. You know, that'd be just great just so someone doesn't just send in random email. That's true. Yep. And also we're willing to say, hey, if you want a whole episode on your own, we're more than willing to do that down the road. We do have a couple topics lined up, but if that's something you're interested in doing, please reach out to us and we can try to set something up. I like it. But okay. Let's jump back now now to the good, the really good news, right? (laughs) So... We're announcing winners, starting with our grip challenge. Yeah, so we got a ton of people coming by our it space. It was insane. It was kind of slow at first because obviously people are there for jiu-jitsu and, or in, you know, having that focus. But I think people started coming around by us and finding this thing out. And, like, it was, like, just a huge amount of people wanting to come try this grip out versus competitors or just parents or whomever. Like, everybody was trying it out. It was really fun. So we got a lot of recordings. We took the top 10 of each group, just so people could see how they ranked, you know, 
walking by just to see how it, people were like definitely walking by the scoreboard and going like, "Ooh, let's see if yeah. I'm in the top ten people or whatever." Totally scoping that thing out. But we had prizes for just the top two. Yep, top two men, top two female, and top two youth, right? Yes. Okay. So we'll do with the youth first. So with a score of ninety six point eight, we right. had Trey T. So Trey T. Yeah, we're not saying last names. No, last for... names of verification. Yep. And then the first one was Benjamin L. So Benjamin L had 101.4. So 101. You know what's interesting? Because we were going to talk about that. We did youth this year, anything less than 16 years old. But then mm-hmm. next time we'll probably do like less than 10. Yeah. And then 10 to 16. It's yeah. like some of those 50 year olds versus a, you know, an eight year old kid. So that was a good learning experience for us. So those are your winners for the youth. We'll jump to the female. So female with a score of 92. We have Mia N. Mia N with a score of What'd 92. What'd she get? 92. That's, yeah. So it's still pretty strong. That's really strong. Because like I said, some of those boys probably like 15 or 14 too. So they were right there up as well. And then first one who dominated the whole day was Andrea E. So Andrea, Andrea e. e had 102. Wow. Right there. So 102 That's points. Really good grip. And then to the men. It was kind of slow in the beginning. We had youth mostly trying it out, and then pretty soon, like the men picked up, and everybody. Yeah, started. I had first place for a little bit, and then I got dethroned. Yeah, and then so for second place, we had Riley H. For, he crushed it for a hundred and forty-five point four. He did so well. <laughs> that was like unsuspecting. I believe like the, Riley was a rock climber. Yes. Too. Yeah, and then first place. That, like, it was a very sizable guy, but, you know, definitely didn't surprise he us. crushed was it. was Jorge S. So Jorge S got a score of a 157.0. Yeah, zero. it was bonkers. He just, like, grabbed it and just went really hard. I would think it boom. was, like, one of his first or second ones. I think yeah, yeah, had, second. It was I like think the second, second one, like, once he got it, he and then he just flashed it, flash and we're like, whoa. So which that was, was really insane. cool. So, yeah, it was such a quick grip, too. It was just, boom. You know, a lot yeah, of people were just there hit squeezing into it. it, trying to get it. His was, like, explosive. Yeah, I didn't think it would actually record, but, I mean, it was pretty accurate. So. Those are your winners. Just like Matt said before, contact us at info at thegrapplingpodcast.com and give us your full name and maybe a little description of how you were at the event or just some discussions. Yep. And we will send you over those gift cards. So thank you very much for that. And now for our lost interviews. Yep. So anyone who <laughs> interviewed was entered in a chance to win a hundred dollar BJJ Fanatics and, gift card. And I believe we had twelve people. Twelve people. We had twelve people that here. were, again, we were very thankful for it to to take their time out of their busy schedule at the grappling event to take a break and sit and chat with us about their yeah, about their event and how their experience are, or even just talk about jiu-jitsu in general. So my studio not only is a grappling studio, but the other half of it is we play Dungeons and Dragons at here. At We're the, nerds. The studio. So, yes, I'm definitely a big nerd. So, Levi has a so 12-sided I, dice so, later. So, Matt was like, we should get a D12 dice to do this. Like, can you find any? I'm like, yeah, there's probably 10 at the table that we're sitting <laughs> at. So, I grabbed one. So, I have a D12. So, okay. D12 for all you I'm gonna non-nerds know. out there is a 12-sided dice. And I'll tell the number, and I'll say the first name of who, what your what the number is, and then maybe we roll it and see who wins. So you should have the order, right? Yep, like I have the right order. So me. just go from one to 12 down. Yep, that's right? what I did. Okay. So Tyler's number one. <laughs> I feel like it's, set, like, you always think of contest, like the big spinning wheel. Yeah. It's going to be like, it's going to be Buckets was number two. Jorge was three. Zach was four. Caleb is five. Evelyn is six. Evelyn's dad, Mike, is seven. Ethan is eight. Luke is nine, Ben is ten, Cole is eleven, and Noah is twelve. And here we go. Number five. Number five is Caleb P. Caleb P. Please e- email us at the uh, info at the grappling podcast to claim your gift card. We'll probably wait a couple days to send that out just to get everybody yep. to send all their emails in. Yep. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Nice. You know, before we move on from this topic, though. I wanted to say, actually, Levi has a lot of really great pictures and videos and stuff from the event. We'll probably be posting some over the next couple of days. I know I saw a couple of them. Actually, that's a good idea. I think, yeah, we'll, we have a couple of different ones. I'm not sure which ones we could post or not as far as, like, the pictures. So maybe maybe just reach out to us, say hi. I'm not sure because we got a couple of pictures of some people, but names were definitely new to us, so... 
Oh, I was thinking even just posting on our social. Oh, we like, can do hey, that too. Cool, yeah, cool pictures. That way, if you guys want access to them. Otherwise, I guess for the with the with kids though, probably just reach out and we'll send you. You know, like parents reach out and we'll send you the photos. So we yeah. don't want to post other people's kids on social media. There we go. You know, for example, like Cole, if you and your mom are listening. Levi got a really cool picture of you <laughs> yes. podcasting. That's true. It's definitely like as a parent, I would want that one in my yeah, that was my really photo book. One. You know, so yeah, just send us an email at info at the grappling podcast and verify it's you, and then we'll send that stuff your way. Well, there you go. So we're we're looking forward to doing another grappling industries. I'm not sure at what capacity we'll do it. We really like interviewing people and talking with people. We were also in talks of maybe looking at seeing commentating that day. Cool. Uh, we absolutely love grappling and jiu-jitsu, and we definitely have some experience, so it'll be fun to kind of dictate some matches as we see it, probably focus on a match or two that's going live. So we're going to talk with Grappling Industries about that and see if that's something we can do in the future. Or, like we said, we'll just have another sit- similar setup to get some interviews, talk with people. I just love expanding this whole grappling field that we love. Yeah. Build the culture of grappling. That's what I love. It's a supportive culture. It's amazing, like I said, for people to sit down and not know who we are, except that we love talking jiu-jitsu. was an easy, was people didn't feel odd or awkward. They're like, oh, yeah. cool, this is fantastic. Let's, let's have a conversation. Like, it's, it's a great way to meet new people and, and merge together. So I, I love it. I like how people also don't just, like, identify with the way they make money when you're in a grappling place. By the way you make money? Yeah. So, like, outside in society, a lot of the way that you are identified oh, is, like, how yeah. you make money. Because people will say, I True. am a, and then insert role that they've provided or the role mm-hmm. that they've earned or however they got it through That's their company. True. And they identify with that role as part of their being versus at a grappling event. It's hi, I am. And then their name kind of reminds me of Fight Club where it's like everybody's there and everyone's just kind of getting, you know, it's obviously an intense version, but very brutal and fighting each other. It's like, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, just we're all we're all wanting to engage in this thing. So I love activities like this, just to be able to merge everybody. Like nobody's got a title on them when you're yeah. on the mats. Either you're just all wearing. You might have just choked guards. the doctor for all you know. For all you know. But the cool thing is, or they, got choked by a doctor. I have a very good friend who is a surgeon, mm. and he's like, you can't obviously tell it all outside of it, like just a normal human being, but just. Like I said, it's a status that no matter what your status is, it's yeah. not going to help me defend this arm That's a hard skill right to like show off to, you know? <laughs> I'm a surgeon. Yeah, well, uh, watch I'm how gonna, good I can I'm wash move my hands. your spleen from this side <laughs> to this side. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But it just, there's no ego with it. And I think we've talked about that before of just the ego on the mats. Like you, this hierarchy of importance doesn't matter as long as you're tapping people. So today's topic, and other topic. Yes, tapping with people with... Or not technique, tapping. technique pairings, pairings of it. You know, I'll try so yeah. Right. What's your what's your first technique pairing? Mm. Sorry, I get a drink there. So pairings actually is a very interesting thought. So when I had the last twenty four hours, I was kind of think of some different pairings, as we put it. And I think as I've gotten more experience with jujitsu, even past blue belt, I saw them less as combos and more like backups. Mm. Right. So it wasn't even like a it's still a backup, but it's a predictable backup. That's a good way to think about it. I like that. So for me to do a move and to think if this move fails, here's a very predictable, good, solid technique I can pair with it. So Yeah, you got a lot of those. Well, and that was the thought because combo just makes it seem like I'm going to hit you with this one-two motion. That's right? a good point. Like a combo it's, would be like a Toriando to another pass. It's yeah. A then and then B. Yeah, but it's kind of like... Versus... To do the other pass, though, is assuming that, like, they're going to stop what you're about to do. So that's what I'm saying. The combinations is almost like it's a, it's a, like a backup. I pairing. guess I was thinking of more of like Kazushi. Well, that's the thing, too. Because Kazushi would be the jab of grappling. That's true. Ooh, so TM. That's <laughs> Kazushi <laughs> is the jab of grappling. The jab. But it sets you up. And I think, like, wrestling and guard passing is very kazushi based in that sense where i think being on the ground and like top pins and maybe some transitional spaces like people can adjust and move but we'll keep kind of talking about this the first one that came to mind when i thought what's what's been really reliable for me as far as pairings is going from an ashi position Mm -hmm. creating a reaping action from ashi so reaping and getting a knee bar Mm. I've used that so many times that Matt's probably going, I don't, I've never seen you do that because I've completely stopped doing it. 
It's too. Start, it's too easy for me. You should start doing it again then. I'll I'll tap everybody with it. Bring it I, on. I can't. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> no, so, I wouldn't be surprised. The idea is that, <laughs> so the reaping action exposes the heel hook. I could totally see myself getting you And a lot that. of people spin, yeah. right? So a lot of people spin to counter it. And, and typically people, the the applier would spin with the person and land in like outside Ashi for with the heel hook. So instead, when I reap, I let the top person spin and I stay in place and let the legs spin in place. And then I just, they literally land in a knee bar. And I've had every single person just stop and look at me like, Oh, that feels tight. And I just tap people right there. You should keep doing that because, or else we're going to develop bad habits around this parts. I know. Where bad. we spin out and then we go, oh no, I got Well, the thing is knee people, ball. people spin complete. So if you, if you do uh, a quarter spin, so a quarter turn, mm -hmm. that's what you should be doing to extract your knee. Mm -hmm. So you should be turning down and pulling your knee out or turning down and back stepping. But people will turn all the way, like they'll turn a 180. So yeah. do like a 180 spin. And then that's where they get stuck. So I've let I've been so lazy. I I reaped. I just lay there and watch. Bam! I land right in the new bar. I gotta try all this time. One. I'll show you after after yeah. the podcast. It just works so well. But it, again, like I said, if you stay there, I'll get a heel hook. If you move, I'll get a uh, a new bar. Nice. I like it. So it's it's really the old reliable for me. Nice. Well, here I'm gonna save my leg one for <laughs> not this one, but the next. Okay. Actually, this is one I've been really hitting quite a bit lately. A rear naked. A choke to an arm triangle from mount. So you go for the oh. RNC, you say they slip the shoulder, they miss it, right? It's like, I've been really working on my back control, so I've been trying new things. Sure. Sometimes it works. Yeah. Sometimes it backfires. And uh, that's part of the training room. But usually if I have the overhook around, I can just kind of infinity rope, as in grab my own hand and slink it through, and I'll actually have a pretty good setup for an arm triangle. So I think that works actually very well because, kind of like what I just said before, like the backups. Because you want to you want to tap someone with rear naked choke, yeah. But you're saying as you're slipping, you just switch right to the arm triangle. Yeah, you beat them to it. You beat them to it. So I like that because actually pairs really well for my next one. But just to your point right there, like it's it's really smart to have that in place because otherwise, if people leave the rear naked choke, there's a lot of people who are tempted to just go to mount. Yeah, right. Or try to I'm gonna reclaim my position very quickly versus keeping on that same submission mindset to go. Nope, I'm gonna switch from one submission to another. So I guess Ashi. To knee bar is similar. It has a outside heel hook to knee bar, basically. Mm, yeah. So it's like you're 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 doing that to say I'm gonna go for a heel hook. If you don't spin right now, I'm gonna get a heel hook on you. you know, so that's that's interesting. With this one too, uh, if you are going like an over under seatbelt grip, I've noticed if you if they if you're on the overhook side, mm -hmm. right, and then that because that's the easy one for them to slip the shoulder on. This is where you tend tend to see it more. Right. If you can get a good lat grip. You can sometimes keep their arm up high, and then you just you do have to switch your grip, but the arm's isolated already. Oh, sure. So it's kind of a neat little, I like that little thing that I like, just because that's the hardest thing with an arm triangle, right? Is just getting that dang arm up there. Mm -hmm. But that's just oh, that's they already they put like it that. up for you because they did it to try to slip out of the position. Mm, and usually their true. arm is straightforward when they're trying to sink the shoulder, so it's kind of easy to move. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. You know, works works pretty good. But all right, what's your next pairing? So my next one is. A side elbow escape to a hook butterfly lift. Let me, I'm trying to imagine this. Side so here's what happens. And then most of the time, top, I when, think I know this one. When I've been I, on the receiving end. When I side elbow escape someone, they start switching to Kessa. So they start switching to like a scarf hold, mm. right? And as they switch to the scarf hold, I basically bring my foot down to their bottom knee and hook it, bring my hips in close and just lift people all the way up over on top knee. Mm. So yeah, you do like using those hooks. I say the pairing is a better word for this one because most people, once they feel the side elbow escape happening, they know their side control is about to be lost. So there's a very common movement they're going to do. So it's the same thing. It's saying like, I, you don't find many people that are going to suddenly go, oh, I'm just going to like go backwards or they're going to even like counter it. Even mm -hmm. like as the knee comes in, like they grab my ankle and pull it back out. They're just instinctively switching positions. They're not going, hey, I should be addressing this elbow escape versus going, eh, it's lost. Mm. I'm just going to leave right now. And the only really spot to leave from a side control position is switching yourself to a Kessa. So as I bring my knee down, it's already coming around for like a close guard, I should say. But as I feel their hips switch, my foot kind of follows with them to that bottom knee. This was actually one that was amplified when I was watching my coach, Roy Dean, do it. He had a 
good video on this movement. And he made it seem way smoother than I do it. But it's been old faithful again for me. Like I'd be able to switch and grab it. So again, it's just a side elbow skip is one where once people feel the knee penetrate across the hip, they know it's disappearing. So I'm always waiting for the more experienced person to move. But if they're if they're inexperienced and just let me keep going, it's a good actually probably a measuring stick for me for people from side elbow escape. Mm. Like if I'm able to go through, like how do people respond? That's interesting. If they stay there, you know, they shouldn't be doing that. If they switch to Kessa, that's a little more experienced. And the more advanced person I feel that would be addressing my side elbow escape and stay inside control. I like it. I you have to sh I, I know you've done this one to me, but I have to see it again. Cause like this one sounds cool. Like I should be using it too. I feel like we should film a couple of these. Yeah, we should. And then we could put them on, yeah, on our social media. Like here's our three. Yeah, I like that idea. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll do that. I mean, would that actually, that'd be a fun class if we had a group of guys and gals and everybody just shows one of their favorites, you know, for a specific topic. Yeah, maybe I'll like do that table. where I can I say like it far enough it. out. Yeah. yeah. Everyone like brings one thing. You yeah. Know? But that might be hard for, for class time. You know, we'd have to go pretty quick, depending on how many people are yeah. showing up. Like, if there's 10 people and or 10 we, people got combinations. You could always pick four and just be like, four, do it this time. Four can do it next time, you know? like That's true. It'd be cool to see what Hunter Save picks and what Luke picks. Like, yeah. But okay. All right. So, since we're talking about escapes, I'll pick an escape, too. Mm -hmm. you, you totally know which one I'm going to say. Yep. Mermaid escape to, like, backside Ashi slash sometimes 50-50. It depends what they give you. <laughs> like, <laughs> but... I really love that one. That is that combo. I, funny enough, it's like I know this falls apart. Like the higher the skill the person gets, but that has probably been my most reliable. Yes, combination. it is. It is is Matt the Merman, the Black Lung Dad. Yeah, you're truly the Merman. <laughs> Matt Matt took a little while to pick it up. I remember in the beginning you were kind of confused on the escape. I'm not confused, but kind of like you're figuring it out. And then once Matt figured it out, it's like clicked. Holy cow! Like that was. Yeah, I've actually. I've done it to everybody that I've ever faced since then. Yeah, the power kip. There's yeah. a word for it. I have to sometimes buy a fire. When someone's got like 100 pounds on me, I do have to get a little bit more like salmon-y and get on my side. Yeah. But it works, though. The merman. So be, you're saying... If I was ever like a UFC fighter, the Matt mer the merman, Matt, oh yeah. my God, I'd have to pick it. I get, I get great at people getting on top of me. They call me the merman. That's way too I love funny. it. <laughs> you, know, like you know, I thought of something. Boy. <laughs> this this is going to be like really out there. Imagine. Okay, so we have a uh, kipping escape from the bottom of mount, right? Yep. Well, if we flip it and you're inside someone's clothes guard. You're going to hurt them. <laughs> you're going to hurt them. I'm, saying, gonna just tell I'm saying tripod up, yep. right? Push on their hips and somehow kip your way inside their clothes guard. I think I need to put my head on the ground or, ch or their chest. I'm just saying. Yeah, we could try. It's just upside down mount. It's kind of like a skinny jeans kind of deal. Violent skinny jeans. I wonder if way. you bring your knees to your chest and you sit down, like you sit down behind you. and <laughs> We should try. This, is, this is theory. We try, yeah. we try stuff all the time. But I'm just saying, you like flip it in space. Like yeah. if you, if, So I always wanted a 3D modeling program and to have like, and, and, and there's one website, uh, I can't remember what it's called, that has like 3D model people doing jiu-jitsu. But just to rotate it. Yeah. Right? So flip it in space and go, what would that movement look like if it was completely inverted? Like we were doing like ham sandwich shootouts. Yeah. You know? Like to be like, okay, if we rotate this, this is technically bottom half guard or bottom, you know, top half or whatever. Like you can kind of rotate it and say like, okay, it's the same movement. Does it work from bottom or does it work from the top? So I thought, well, you're still in mount. When it's flipped, right? So you're in guard. So why couldn't you kip your way, your knees inside? Hmm. You got me thinking now. It's worth looking into. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a radically cool you thing. You might go, oh, you might just double knee your partner in the groin. It's like, maybe. Or you come up with some cool new, new technique that escapes close guard all the time, which I'm a big fan of. Well, I've been thinking there. about them sassy toeholds lately. You mean the ones yeah. I did last night? Yeah, that one. And then I saw the one that you were talking about that inspired you. But I was even just thinking, like, e Minari roll to toe hold. I know everybody would usually go for the heel hook there, you know, because you're in 411, but it'd be kind of fun. You're saying e Minari into 411? Yeah, so e Minari roll into, because you'll land in, like, the saddle. So you, and you so just you grab do, a toe hold. It's a, nothing complicated. Doing a toe hold from the saddle? Once you get them on their butt, yeah. 
Because you, you have the, the eye, leg isolated. Yeah, I'm saying the foot that you're heel hooking, that's the one you're toe holding? Yeah. Okay. I was like, I don't know. Interesting. Kind of something silly. I can see that. It could be kind of nice, like, because it comes on quick. It's true when people hide it. I was curious that you can probably just do the top foot, maybe a toe hold. Yeah, and then you have one leg collected and the other ones with your hands, one's with your legs. Yeah, because there's some technique. I can't remember. I was researching a while where you backstep. It's like you backstep from passing guard. You sit on their hip and you basically lean back for a knee bar on the side. Mm. And then they cross their feet over and you can basically take a far side toe hold. So. Sorry, we'll it's my brain going, but yeah, that is something I could see that we have to we'll have to play with that as well. So, what's your next pairing? So, my next pairing, when I was thinking about the combination, I've taught it a couple times in class, was the monkey mount, that wrist pin. So, the wrist pin to uh, yep. the back mount. Yep, that seems to be old faithful for me as far as yeah. when I'm on top of somebody and I, I can't work that my, one. Can't work my underhook system a lot if they're really in super tight. Most people when they're in super tight. They're either really turnable, mm -hmm. so you grab that wrist and they're really turnable, or you push it above their shoulder, and because they're so tight, they want to reclaim their tightness. So they open up, they suddenly want to like shut the book really mm. quickly, and that turns their shoulders, so my knee slides up and there's, there's the back. Ooh, I like that one. So it's a really good one for me to, anytime I say from mount, like how can I get someone's back from mount, just being able to do that monkey mount transition like turns people pretty well. And if they don't turn... Then, like I said, it's me staying on top and working some underhooks, and then eventually that will isolate and get some moves going from there. Nice, nice. So. That's a good. That's a good combo. Monkey mount, wrist pin. Mm -hmm. They try to reclaim their arm back, and if they don't, you have an arm isolated. Yep. So now you have an arm isolated. You can start feeding it above their head. I like that. Grabbing or put arms, your knee like in their armpit, so then they can't. We're cutting it back as yep. easy. If you start have a, arm. if you have a cross face in place too, you can pin it with your foot. Oh, and then you lift the head and go for a mounted triangle too. Ah, uh, yep, I remember that one. It gets super fancy, I but with that one, yeah. So it's very been very reliable for me. I remember I saw that a while ago from Eddie Bravo, and I was like, "Whoa, I gotta try that out." And it works very well. I love seeing moves that are very quickly applicable into rolling. Yeah, and not something where you're like, "Okay, here's a very specific situation, and now this move comes in play." <laughs> it's like, nope, you're just in close guard, or you're in whatever. Like this is a move you can do right out of the gate. So I enjoy that. Solid. Mm -hmm. So what yours? Okay. This one's nothing uh, groundbreaking, mm -hmm. but it's such a good one. It's just the straight foot lock from Ashi. And if they defend it, you go to the heel hook. And if they defend the oh, hook, you go back to Ashi. Oh, yeah. And it's the like That's back and forth. I love it. And so for the listeners, the reason this one is really cool, some of you, the, some of you already know this, but those who don't, it's really helpful to know. So if you're in standard Ashi, or you know, essentially the leg is isolated, and say you have a straight foot lock on. What is the thing that you're always told to do when you first learn how to defend leg locks? Put the boot in. Put, yeah, or foot locks, I should say, yeah. Put the boot on. But when you put the boot on, you stick your heel right out there, and it's easy to grab. So mm -hmm. then you ditch the ankle lock, you go for the heel hook. Mm -hmm. Reap, grab that heel, <laughs> you're good to go. And then what do they do after that? They point their toes. Point their toes. And, and then you right put back. it back into the <laughs> right into the straight foot lock because they're giving you what you want. It's so funny when Matt says, and then you just reap. Because you as just... we were at Grappling Industries last last weekend, <laughs> yeah. it's like there's enough where we're like, wait, what? You can't just reap like that? So Yeah. Actually, Quintet didn't allow heel hooks either. I thought that was wacky. I was trying to read up on that, and I couldn't get a solid explanation why that wasn't a thing. Were they just worried everybody was just going to go heel hooking left and right? Because it is a... If yeah, anyone listens sure. to our 20 episode, mm -hmm. you'll find that uh, it's a big deal. So I found that a lot of people there then were going toe holds. Yeah, toe holds. So I think toe holds kind of are the makeshift like some of the heel hook. Steamas. Or the Aoki locks. Yeah, there we go. That's Aoki what locks, yeah. Seema locks are brutal. Yeah. Holy cow. That was a good series. I don't want to ruin anything for the, for the listeners, though, who haven't had a chance to check it out yet. I did. <laughs> yeah. You ruined it already? Uh, what? No, I, I saw all the... You just blast it on Instagram. No, yes. no, <laughs> Here's I, who won. Here's who lost. Oh, yes. Here's what happened. I mean, the whole event was very good. Quintet was yeah. absolutely fantastic and fun. Different format, different energy for sure. But uh, it, it's just good seeing people try some different attempts at our grappling sport. So I really enjoyed that. Nice. All right. Do you have any other combos you wanted to share? I brought my top three. Yeah, I had just a top three as well. Nice. I just like the idea that even on top of techniques, 
I'll share the Gordon Ryan quote that had really helped me as far as, you know, my whole jiu-jitsu game was the fact that one system, its weaknesses gets paired with the strong point of another system. Mm. So even when we talk about pairings of like techniques, there's pairings of systems. So like if you want to get really good at arm locks, you could pair it with Kimuras. So as people bend their arm, you get Kimura or people straighten their arm off a Kimura, you get an arm lock. So those are like natural big pairings. So there's kind of system pairings as well. But within that, just something that if you do something that threatens a positional change, you'll most likely open up a submission opportunity. And for going for a submission, most of the time people will tighten up and that will open up a positional opportunity. So those are good things because I guess in general of us talking about combinations, I guess we can talk for a second of, you know, the importance of that in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And at what level that's very important. You know, it's a good point where you go, how do you get your partner to give you the response you want? And the best way to do it is to attack the thing Attack where the response you want is their defense. I'll be right? straightforward, and I'll think. I think that this is where the blue belt blues come from. You think so? I believe I've diagnosed that. You diagnosed the blue belt blues? <laughs> yes. Well, the blue belt blues. We'll talk about Pe- another future episode. People say that's a thing. I don't know. So I get the idea, though. So the blue belt blues essentially is the fact that you've got this whole other mountain to climb. You just got blue, and you're looking off in the distance, and like someday that purple belt's yours, and it's like two or three years off. Okay. You're going, oh, like you got such a big high off that blue belt. You're like, now I have to wait another two years, three years. But again, if you're focused just on rank, it's I'll say, I, th- I think the more difficult. I think I have the solution to the blue belt blues. But I, I will say that the blue belt itself is a frustrating belt because now in the beginning when you're just doing a generic move, let's say you're a year into jiu-jitsu and you're having some newer people come into your gym, you could just grab an arm. You know, like if mm-hmm. you're in mount, you could just grab that arm for an arm lock and go, oh boy, here's my arm lock. And you're like, yeah, I did that. So I think that's what we talked about the white to blue belt episode where Elio Gracie said a blue belt is someone who can do jujitsu to win, you know, a street self-defense situation against an untrained person because you're just doing the move. Mm. You're doing one move. Like you sink a rear naked choke in and no one's, no one's slipping their shoulders for Matt to do an arm triangle. Like, it's just one and done. So you feel like, oh, this is great. Like, I could do a Kimura. They have no idea what a Kimura is. And I tap the person with a Kimura. Like, yeah, this feels great. But then now you're going against people who go, hey, I know what a Kimura is. I know what a straight arm lock is. So I know I have to keep my arms in tight. Selling so you go grab that arm for a straight arm lock and selling those arms are in tight. Mm. It's like, I can't get this anymore. I can't just, like, grab this, this submission. Or, like, now you're keeping your neck tight. Now you're keeping your arms tight. And you're looking over at your coach and you see him, purple belts do it with ease and things like that like now you're completely frustrated of what to do and like that's where i think really gets a lot of people because in the beginning you're learning the macro the big planets of jiu-jitsu of like here's the arm locks and the kimuras and the rear naked chokes and the mount and like all these things are very accessible and easy for you to get if you're at least eight months senior to a new person right but now you're doing against people who are experienced like, there's no more of that. And now you have to be crafty. Now you have to do Microsoft. You have to do pairings. You have to, like, combo things together. I guess it's the same equivalent of boxing. You could just jack someone in the face with an uppercut. Like, they're, like, they're not going to see it coming. You know, you could just go, and if you're quick enough with it, like, you could just hit somebody. Mm-hmm. But now someone, like, knows the setups and the movement or the, the individual punches. Like, you're not going to hit them anymore. It is kind of funny. You're going out there with your finishing move. And, like, when, <laughs> That's you're, a not, good point. when you're not versing somebody... Like, who knows what's going on? You know, it's a lot easier. You can just go you spam your finishing move right out of the you're gate. Just, you're just... They see you charging up over there. They don't do anything. They don't react. And then versus when you get to, you know, like, after you've, like, gotten around a little bit with it and you find out that your bread and butter is no longer your bread and butter, mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting. Well, it's funny because it's just like playing Street Fighter and you're just hitting Hadokens, Hadokens, yeah. Hadokens, Hadokens. And it's like, Somebody okay, knows how to play. You're, you're done. Like, this, <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is silly. But. People who are very technical and are playing, there's a lot of trade-offs and setups and combos. You know, it's like then they're a little more experienced. So I think being able to take that, the next step to be able to uh, hit combinations and work things together, that's where a lot of your movement and opportunities uh, start happening. And then from there, 
from purple to brown then becomes the micro stuff. But the combinations are just a big one. It might not be super predictable, but once someone has the instinct to say, let's say I go for an arm lock and I pull the arm lock out, you know, like, okay, well, now you can combo that with a triangle choke, you know? And I think sometimes we say, we don't mention those things, Matt, because I think the combinations both you and I just talked about today was against experienced people. Mm. A little bit. It is actually weird when you're going to try doing a combo yeah. that you like. Yes. And someone's really new hey, and they don't, don't react get, the way. Yeah, they I don't want you to. Yeah, you're not holding the gun right, you know, like kind of thing. And you're just like, and then you're like, oh, wait, I can actually skip a step. Yeah. I don't need to be sneaky and isolate your arms for a naked choke. It's right there. There's, yeah. there. I don't even have to do anything. And I think, like I said in the beginning, once you have that power there, then you start finding it not as fun because you can just like hit people, hit people, hit people. And you're mm. like, Bleh. like you want to like, it, it feels okay. It feels more satisfying to catch things on more experienced people. Yeah, that's, for sure. That's my take. I don't, I don't get the vibe where people will just, hit moves on, you know, someone that's very easy to, you know, to, you know, hit those moves on. Like, it's, it feels weird. Like, like yes, you should be able to. Congratulations. I just downloaded this martial arts game that was supposed to be, like, one of the best martial arts games of all Hold time. On. What's the name? Sifu. I was about to say that. Oh, you're going to say but Sifu? I haven't have played, played it, Sifu? but I've, I haven't played it, but I've heard it's really it's good. It's on, it's 50% right now on... Play, well, it's the PlayStation Store. Oh, cool. It's 50% off. Well, you have to tell me how it is because I almost bought that game. Well, I saw... I almost did. I saw a lot of people said it had a really high learning curve, but yeah. it was like one of the best fighting video games of all time. All right, we'll have to put that to the test, And though. I was like... Because it looks like kind of kung fu and things like that. But So anyways, things like that, I remember I was just setting it up and it said like setting your difficulty level with it. And I thought... Go that's max. Kind of, that's max kind of, level. But that's the interesting part where... So Matt says like go max... And it makes sense, like, but why, why go max? Like, why not just go easy and you can still complete the game? Because I'm a heathen. Yeah. He... What did Matt say the other on... day? Like, yeah. the gods of triumph demand sacrifice. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's the, but there's a better flavor that comes from it. You know, like, it's like making a big meal. Like, some things taste a little bit better when you put some time and energy into something instead of just going, yeah. well, if you want to tap somebody out, well, I've told people this many times, not like people have asked, but I've given this example, like go to my youth class, go to, go grab some youth and, and go hit Kamara's all day. Like, is, like there's your free submission. He's not actually recommending that people. He's you, being you should end up, I'm being he's super being sarcastic. sarcastic. You should, but it shows how easy that is. Like you want to tap somebody like good, eat, eat as many free donuts as you want. Like, <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't get how that's satisfying to you. You know, what's weird. You do like inoculate yourself to difficult things Ooh, you know what you know? Good, good point like I'm, I'm probably butchering this phrase but like shooting fish in a barrel yeah is that something similar could i use that i don't know i don't know why people it's, are it's shooting, like shooting fish, fish in, a, in barrel. a barrel it's already in the barrel you just well, go that's what i'm saying though like it's, it's saying like how easy it is just oh, to yeah. like hunt something like is it satisfying versus saying i, yeah, no. I chase this elk for two days you know and i have satisfying video down. game accomplishment of my life is can I guess that it was something to do with God of War? You can guess it is. Definitely something to do with God what, of War. Was it when you defeated that when Valkyrie? I, yeah, when thing? I defeated Sigrun yeah. on Give Me God of War mode. That, to me, was a huge accomplishment. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Yeah. To the non-nerds out there, well, you're just going to have to deal with me talking about <laughs> it for a second. But it was really tough. It took me a while. and Because you have to, you can't spam that. It's like that good. Like There's people who talk about how, and now I know this is going to cause a whole rage battle, but People say that she is harder than any Dark Souls boss. Whoa! Yeah, I didn't hear that. Some, I've I, on Reddit, some people were saying that because her her the thing is she's so fast. Sure. Like Dark Souls games are hard. Yeah. Very hard, but like she's so difficult and and like requires so like my I was gonna I was going in a cardiac arrest when I was fighting <laughs> that lady. Like, well, I was thinking I had to like pause the game, pause uh, the halfway through the fight and take a breather. <laughs> I was trying to think like at what sweating. point? At I'm what, sweating now talking about at it. At what point did you think like this has to happen? Actually, funny enough, I didn't think I was gonna beat any of the Valkyries on Give Me God of War okay. mode, and I beat one, and I was like, if I can beat one, I'll shoot them all. Okay. And then I like over I can the see next some, some people year, doing Dark Souls. You know, I just kind of chipped away at it. I can see some people doing Dark Souls, doing it a couple times, and then going, yeah, screw this. Like yeah. what? What makes people keep going? And I guess I can get I translated also right to Jiu-Jitsu. I love the combat in God of War. Like I, it is, it is the, pretty intuitive. It's a so yeah. it has such a good feeling to yeah. it. It's really fast paced. It's perfect. It's a perfect game. I think I can't remember what the relation was making, but I think oh, who was saying that? Oh, oh, 
if you turned jujitsu into a Dark Souls game. Mm. So here's here's my thought. Here's this mega boss. Like let's say let's take this brown belt or black belt that's on the mats, and you come, and nobody tells you anything. Mm. And then I mean you yeah, you, you could te- reset, you could you could technically reset. you could technically do that because it's a jiu-jitsu gym like you keep going day after day after day yeah but no one tells you anything about how to do jiu-jitsu and it's like your goal is just to tap that person out yeah here let me ask you this how yeah. many people have beaten you, let's even say Elden Ring I've beaten Elden Ring and that's the easiest one to beat I think one of my is that the it, easiest one to beat? Yeah, and I remember oh, when I beat Lord. it, there was like a seven percent <laughs> of the from the trophies on PlayStation. There was like a seven percent completion rate when I did. I'm sure I, it's higher now, but like the point is, we'd have even less people in jujitsu because well, it's only the it's only the psychos like me who just like keep show. I I die like two hundred times when I yeah. try to do these things. Like, well, it's funny because you know? I played a couple times at Dark Souls, but it's like I think I have a patience. Or sorry, I have a lack of patience if I feel like I'm not learning something yeah dark souls kind of just like like if i it's, if I, it's different like if that. i'm not figuring out like oh i have to roll here and roll there like if it, if it doesn't feel like i'm improving upon this quick enough mm-hmm. then I, I tend to go back a little bit like it's, it's always good with boss fights where you can see like okay you got 10 percent down they got 20 percent down they got 30 but that's what i'm saying like to say like to every single time maybe not every single time but eventually you're seeing it chip more and more and more and more mm-hmm. Health bars are very easily measurable things to show you are, you're beating someone. Yeah. So you could say like maybe a little bit of jiu-jitsu, say, okay, I've taken this person down. Okay, now I've gotten past their guard. Like, or starting from the bottom and say, okay, I'm able to escape their back mount, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. But so with Dark Souls, I feel like if I make the consistency and I'm showing improvement, then I'll keep going with it. But I've, I've not yet still continued. Because I think at the times I was playing with Elden Ring or Dark Souls 3 that I was like, I just got other things I want to do. Yeah. You know, or like, oh, I'm improving jujitsu or whatever. And it's not yeah. taking away anything else from anyone else doing it, but just was like, I'm always curious, like, what what activities draw people in to say, I'm going to stick with this until I, I achieve you, it. With the God of War one, it was like winter time. I It was four years after I played it through the first time, and I was just like, you know what? I need. I just want something just just to play for like a little mm-hmm. bit, a little chunk of time. Yeah. You know, at night or something like that, or you know, those types of things. Plus, yeah, just like I enjoyed the game and wanted to revisit it because the story is outstanding. That's true. But yeah. But okay, we're we're turning into a video <laughs> game podcast. We should make a video game pass podcast <laughs> about about Jiu-Jitsu. I wonder if it's a some the sort of video game podcast yeah, is the, available. The video game podcast. <laughs> We're gonna have a whole someday we'll have to podcasts. tell a story about how we got our URL. That's true. But that was way too funny. Okay. I would say let's, let's probably wrap this up. So recap, right? So if you were announced as one of the winners, yes. please email us at info at info. the grappling podcast.com. Yep. That's I N F O at the grappling podcast.com. And uh, we'll get every, we'll, we'll get a hold of, you know, get everything together and get everybody out a gift card for $10 for those who yeah, we'll, interviewed with us. And you know, then the winners will get their winner stuff. Yeah. We'll, uh, We'll give it basically a week. Uh, I would assume that if people were there at the event and are listening for this week's podcast, you know, that they'll they'll hear it this week. So give us a ring. And just like Matt always asks me at the end, follow us on various platforms. We've got Apple Podcasts. We have Spotify. Easy enough to just go to thegrapplingpodcast.com. Everything's immediately uploaded there. I think uh, Podbean. We had actually one member here at Theory that he says he subscribes to Podbean oh, all the time. Didn't even so, know a thing. Yeah, so he subscribed to us through there. But yeah, just give us a, a listen. And if you are in a comment section with us, why don't you tell us your favorite combinations? Ooh, Maybe your favorite like one it. that you want to show us a five star review if you I'll, can. Always like seeing some new tools and tricks and things like that. So it's actually quite fun because, especially with the combination stuff, I was listening to an interview with Owen Livesey. Mm. And he was training at Roku, 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 Roka, Roka. I forgot you think it's Roku, like a TV, but Roka, which is where uh, the New Wave team mm. trains at. And he said he rolled with Big Dan, Ooh. so the big monster guy, and he uh, said he was the strongest human he's ever felt by a mile. Dang. For, for you know, I'm not and sure. He was in capacity. Chicago. Oh. Yeah, and he was in Chicago. <laughs> We're like, God, oh my yeah. gosh. And uh, so then Owen, after he got like demolished by this guy, uh, it was a big Dan was like, can I show you a few things? Yeah. 
like Big Dan, like the, the guy that just destroyed you said, hey, can I show you a few things? And he said he proceeded for the next 30 minutes to show me tons of different little things from like pinch headlock and all these different spots. Oh, that's cool. Like for some reason he's like, can, I, can you imagine you're going to a place and you're the visitor and the people are going, hey, can I show you some things? That's cool. Versus that's a, a space. Culture. Versus a space where it's like, I'm going to hide all these things because we want to win. And then what he said was, you know you're a really good competitor when you're fine giving away all your secrets because you're still so good at it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's so Marcelo Garcia. Yeah. He's like, you just give it away because it's like, because someone was saying he was giving away all this X guard stuff and material and people are like, why are you giving away all your secrets? It's because he goes, I know my game better than anyone else. So it's like if you can beat it off the little things and incorporating it. So work your combinations, beat your training partners with it, and then tell them what, what was up. Yeah. How you beat them. And Be then cool. you will progress with the Dark Souls game. So cool. Awesome, guys. We will catch you later.